Welcome to my channel, Purposeful Play, where I talk about all things early childhood education. I'm Danielle and I teach 4K in Wisconsin. And today I wanna to share with you some activities, math activities that you can put out for kids to play with during your center time or choice time or play time, whatever you call it. So let's get started. Okay. I love activities with dice. So this was an easy one. Um, I put out this bird. He's, I know, not the prettiest looking bird, but he is well loved by the kids. So it is um, like a cascade. Actually, you can even see like right through even the, the feathers. It's a Cascade Tabs dishwasher thing. And I just added some foam that I colored orange. I obviously didn't have any orange foam, but I added some eyes and glued on the feathers. And then what the kids do is they roll the dice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They roll the dice. And then I've got a tray full of worms and some tweezers big giant tweezers that are actually really tricky to use because you have to squeeze it pretty hard. So if the kids get a five, they pick up a worm and they feed the rabbit, the rabbit, the bird five worms. So um, you can put out one dice, you could put out two dice. You could also have dice that um, have the actual numeral on, uh, numeral on them. Actually, I'm gonna pull out some different dice that I wanna share with you just because that way you can see uh, what your options are. So you can have one dice, you can have two, or you could have some other ones that I'm gonna share with you. I actually could only find two other ones. I have some that are more, have more than six sides, but I think I took those home for uh, something. So this one is a chalkboard um, dice that I got at the dollar spot one year. Um, at Target and you write on it with a, I use chalk markers, um, but I, I got chalk markers and you can make dots, you can do um, numbers. And I like these too, because if you if you wanna have numbers that are higher than six, you can put those on here as well. And then I also have these ones that have just the numerals one to six on them. So I love um, both of those ones. I also like the big foam ones. I have some like smaller foam ones and then just a regular size dice as well, just to keep it interesting for the kids. I wanted to let you know too that a lot of the activities that I sh I'm sharing now, I probably have them on the videos that have small group activity ideas. So I'll link those down below so you can kind of see also how I use them in small groups. And of course, after you teach them in small groups or in, in your large group, you can put them out for the kids to enjoy on their own. So the next one is fill your cup. And um, I, these are really small cups, but I usually use bigger ones, but I wanna show you something else with these. So this is why I have these ones here. So each person gets a cup and you roll the dice and say they get a, a two, then they take two really small items. Um, like for this one, I have little mini erasers and they would put two in their cup and it's a race to see who fills their cup fastest and with the bigger cups which are um the solo the red solo cups uh, i usually use the unifix cubes which fills them up a little bit faster so that one's called um fill your cup another game if you're doing number recognition is to take the cups and write a number on the top of them and i usually i've obviously used the dixie cups but you can use the red solo cups and you write on it with a sharpie and then actually if you use a magic eraser it will come off so you can change the numbers or letters or whatever you have on there so with these ones um, i like to use several I would say at least five of them. And you can write whatever numbers you want on them depending on um, what you're working on. And then, actually let me flip my camera around to show you what this game is all about. So this game, you take a small item and you can play this with one or two, actually not one, you need to have at least two kids to play this game. So you take a small item, one person hides their eyes while the other person hides the little thing and then they open their eyes and they have to guess 
where that item is. And of course, the person who's guessing has to know the numbers. And the person who hit it also has to know the numbers because if someone says, oh, I think it's under number 17, well, the person who hit it has to show them under number 17. So you can change these numbers. You could also do dots if you wanted to do, do dots so the kids have to count the number of dots or you can, you know, do smaller numbers, bigger numbers, whatever. So that one I call, um, where is it? Dominoes are great fun. I have these set of wooden dominoes. I don't know where I got them. I think they, I was gifted them. Um, and then I also have some foam ones. These ones are obviously well loved. Look at that. Isn't that funny? Teeth marks on them. <laughs> and then I also have this set of teeny tiny ones. <gasps> They're not in there. Well, now I have to go searching for the teeny tiny ones. Someone else must have cleaned up and put them somewhere else. They're like this big and super cute. And you can put these out and have the kids do the, you know, the fun setting them up and pushing them down. And um, I also just put out like little pages that have numbers on them, for all of these ones. And then they have to figure out where they would go. Like number one would go on the the paper that has number one. And then I also have ones that have um, the dots on them as well. So there's three, and then they would have to find the ones that have three dots all together and put them on there. And that I just put out and, you know, see what the kids do with it. Sometimes they take these and put them, these all in order. Um, sometimes they take these and put, actually count out nine dominoes and put them on there. Um, I don't always, show the kids exactly what to do with the materials. Sometimes they, they come up with some really great things on their own. So, you know, just having the materials out is great. I like to sit with the kids too when they're playing these games and when they're, when they're doing things just, did you see that I just, I felt a text on my arm. That's really bad that I can actually, I am actually looking at it while I'm recording. That's really bad, bad, bad distractions. Um, cause then you're talking about the numbers. I also, when I'm sitting with the kids, I'll, ha I'll have a clipboard beside me and I'll, and I'll be making notes who can count these dots one to one, who can identify the numbers. You know, I just, I, I like to just sit there with my clipboard and just jot down notes. So then I have that documentation and I know what the kids know and what they don't know. Teaching your kids to play games with cards is a lot of fun. Just a plain old deck of cards and then teaching them the game, I don't know if it's called War or Snap, where if you hand out all the cards and then when you, the kids flip their cards over, ooh, those ones are the same. When the kids flip their cards over, which number is big, bigger, three or one, and the person who has the biggest number gets to keep the cards. Um, I also just taught my kids, because they knew this game, this was my virtual kids, I taught them about adding them together. So each person flips up two cards. How many do you have all together? And the person with the bigger number gets to keep both the cards. So that was one that I just recently taught my kids. And then there's another game called Garbage. I think maybe I'll see if I can flip my camera around and show you guys how to play that one, because that one's fun too. So... Let me see if I can figure this out. Okay, so the way that this is played is, if we're playing with two people, you deal out 10 cards to each person, and this is how you set them up. So there's five on the top row, and then five on the bottom row. And same with, this is my set. So then that's my person I'm playing with, and then the rest of the cards are in the middle. So how you play is, I'll go first. I flip up the first card and I get a three. And so, oh, I forgot to mention, these all have a, a place. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my three, one, two, three. I can put it in the number three place. And it's still my turn until I can't go anymore. So then I flipped up a six. So I'm going to put it in the sixth place. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to get, oh, I got a ten, which is down here, the ten place. And let's see what I got here. Jack, 
So the face cards don't aren't for anything. There's no spot for a jack. So now I put it here and my turn is over. And then it's the other person's turn. So what if I flipped up and once my turn, I flipped up a three, I can see that my spot is already taken for the three. So then I have to put it face up and then my turn is over. And of course the person, you can either draw from here when it's your turn, the, the pile or the discard pile. And the object of the game is to get all of the cards, ace, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All of those cards in the right spots facing up. Great for number recognition, taking turns, following the rules. If they don't know the numbers, they might have to be counting them. It's just a great, great game and kids love it. Of course, there are lots of other games to play with a deck of cards, and I often will set it up for the kids to play with and kind of say, hey, today you guys can play whatever game. Um, if they do something else, that's okay too. But memory, using the um, regular set of cards, you can do Go Fish, you can teach the kids a game of Crazy Eights, just lots and lots of different games. I have more ideas. I'm drawing a blank right now, but um, those are the ones I can think of today. So put, just putting out a deck of cards is a lot of fun. So this is just a little coffee table that I bought at, I don't know, a yard sale for a couple of dollars. I painted it. And then the top is a chalkboard. And it does need to be repainted just because we've used it a lot this year. Um, actually, if you look carefully, the kids had made a game one time. I gave them the, our chalk markers and they made a game one time that was, this was how you were supposed to follow the path, um, which was a lot of fun. But today I made one and we're doing our building study. So this is a game where the kids roll the dice. And if you get four, you move one, two, three, four, and you land on the number four. So that means you get to pick four cubes and build a little tower with four cubes. And so, oops, one, two, three, four. And then the game continues on. Sometimes you have to take one off. Sometimes you get have to take more than one off. And then we'll see what happens at the end to see how tall everybody's tower is. And which I think would be great to see how high these kids can count when you reach the end of the game. And this game can be played started at either end. It really doesn't matter, but um, I can't wait to see how the kids play with this one tomorrow. I just shared this little activity with you all on my last video, which was what are we playing with this week? But um, even just putting out something as simple as fishing in the sensory bin and then just writing numbers on the fish. And as the kids are catching them, you can ask them like, oh, what number did you catch? So it doesn't have to be specifically a, an activity that has to do with counting or number recognition or something like that. It just could be, hey, just add some numbers to it and talk about what they're doing um, in this activity. A couple of transition activities I do that help with subitizing, which is that quick recognition of small amounts of items. Um, here, I want to share them with you. These are originally, I think I got these from the Mighty Minutes from the Creative Curriculum, um, but this is how I use them. So as the kids are asked to go and wash their hands and then play, I will go uh, up to one child and I say, hippity hoppity, how many? And I'll flash a number to them quickly and they have to tell me how many that is. And another one is, um, this one goes appy tappy tappy, appy tappy too. I'm gonna show my number to you. And then I'll take it away fast. Even songs um, like five little monkeys swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Alligator, can't catch me, you can't catch me, along in Mr. Alligator, quiet as can be. And he snapped that monkey right out of that tree. It talks about like one less. So you had five, what is one less? Four. Um, so that, it, I know it's a finger play, but they're still learning as they're doing that. Another one the kids really love is down on the corner at the bakery shop. There were, say if I have 12 kids, 12 little 
children, uh, 12 little donuts with sugar on top. Along came Danielle, all the alone. What kind of donut did she take home? And then I tell what kind of donut I would take. I would take a maple dip donut. And then another thing that I do is I will have the, I will move this over. I said, well, we have 12. Now we only have 11 donuts. And then this is another transition song. Down on the corner at the bakery shop, there were 11 little donuts with sugar on top. Along came Susie all alone. What kind of donut did she take home? And then Susie gets to turn to tell what don't, kind of donut she likes. She goes and washes her hands and now there are only 10 donuts left. So that's another transition song. Just wanted to say too, one more thing before I wrap this up is that you don't have to make these games or activities huge. You don't have to buy things off of teachers, pay teachers. You don't have to create and laminate and draw. You just have to make it simple. Um, even just things as easy as having the kids make signs in your pet store, which is one we did a couple of, well, maybe even a month ago. The kids made signs. They drew the, the bunny rabbits. Some of them even wrote the first letters, like bunny, B was the, for bunny, and they wrote the number, how much that would cost. So that is numeracy. That is number recognition. And then again, like when they're counting out their money, when they're paying for their new pet, that that's also, um, you know, counting, counting one to one. So you might find that you are doing a lot of activities that have to do with numeracy and you might not even know about it. But if you kind of bring your attention more to it, then you can focus on it a little bit more. And when you're playing with the kids, then you can talk a bit more about it. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. It was a request from several people to see more videos on literacy and numeracy. And I mean, this is just one of many, 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 many videos. So I might even call this, you know, preschool numeracy video activities number one or something like that. So stay tuned for more and I will see you next time. Have a happy day.